Hello, everybody, or should I say Jalo? Because our first episode for week 10 is none other than opera. But before we get to that, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for viewing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't liked or subscribed yet, well, what are you doing, folks? This is the fastest growing movie review channel on the block. Says analytics that I completely made up in my head. So <laughs> join the train. But most importantly, I appreciate you joining me now. And I hope that you do like this video, uh, both truly and uh, virtually. And uh, again, for everyone who already has subscribed, I very much appreciate you. And if you're subscribing right now, well, I appreciate that as well. Like I said, uh, today's episode, or this in particular video, we're covering Opera by Dario Argento, 1987. And this is one of at least a few Dario Argento movies that I have seen. I've seen Suspiria, I've seen Phenomena, and I've seen Deep Red. And I think this is pretty, it's closer to um, one of my more favorite, my just one of my favorite uh, Italian horror movies. I think that there's a lot of, of, of aspects that Dario Gento, Art Gento is good at that he infuses into a lot of his movies. And there were some really neat details or details, tomato, tomato, that are pretty damn cool about this one. And as you can see here on the left from the poster for the movie, kind of have like nails taped to someone's eyelids. It is a really, really cool type of mm, plot point, I guess, or or MO for for lack of a better term. And I'm not sure if if that would be part of MO or or methodology or what have you. But uh, the story is as such that a masked murderer is going around, kind of tying people up. Um, as a opera singer is getting her chance to finally be the lead in Lady Macbeth, which is said time and time again throughout the movie that it is a cursed play or or opera, uh, either either or, and which is true. Uh, Lady Macbeth is very much cursed, uh, dates all the way back to Shakespeare as he was putting on plays that I guess a coven of witches, they hexed the play and there was illnesses and uh, perhaps even deaths in the very first performance of Lady Macbeth to the point that it is said Shakespeare had to perform one of the roles himself. Uh, due to injuries being sustained by the actors. But uh, that's a really cool kind of plot point. And another big one is that the director is a former horror movie director. And he's trying to kind of bring the same creativity and like let's let's bring the art form forward a bit which is, it's really common in movies, but it's said, like, in this movie, that in plays, it's not, that's not something that this audience so much appreciates. Um, it never truly delves into whether it is successful or not. Um, it certainly seems successful, as every performance is to a sold-out crowd, but uh, I digress. He is um, adding certain elements like uh, ravens being a part of the set. Um, ravens play a fairly big role in this movie as they kind of 
get the 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 original lead so steamed up that she she leaves set in a huff and and then she's hit by a car as she left the building thus giving our main character a chance to be the lead and she gets some kind of concerning phone calls um even before she knows that she's going to be the lead she gets a phone call letting her know so we're we're kind of led to believe the antagonist is at least initially uh working on behalf of our main character and then we get um people in the actual you know stadium or or arena being murdered uh, but the the wheels really start to heat up and the oil really gets cooking when we have our main character for the first time uh, basically trapped in a room, tied up, needles to eyelids, um, to a pillar as she's at her then boyfriend's uncle's place where he can stay, essentially. And she is forced to watch because she can't even. Or she, you know, she could, I guess, avert her eyes, but uh, you would probably still see it. It's, it's uh, maybe even a more sinister and diabolical form of the the Clockwork Orange eye scene because there's nails and and it's making her the lead character's eyes bleed as she watches her boyfriend just get straight uh, chop sueyed, you know, um, killed real hard. And we're like, okay, it's Giallo. Who's this killer? Why is he doing it this way? Why is this girl um, not being killed? Because she is uh, let go afterwards. The, the killer had plenty of opportunity to do what he or she wanted, but did not. And then... We have a scene where the the killer kind of tears up the the dress of the lead. Um, enter another scene where the seamstress is kind of trying to decipher a clue that had been left behind. And while this happens, again, lead gets tied up, and the killer pursues the seamstress, who kind of actually had the upper hand at one point but um the and and this was like one of the head scratchers and it's a it's just a nitpick but um i mean th the seamstress really had uh things under control and then like just really kind of gave gave the villain the the win in the end really choked the big lead that she had going into the fourth quarter, so to speak. And, and she gets murdered and, um, it has to be said, like all the violence is, is really, uh, well done as Argento is known to do. Um, would I say he's, um, better than someone like Fulci? Um, I, I think you could, you would have a good argument for either or, um, because I think Dario Argento actually he is quite good. I I, I know Suspiria, uh, one of the death scenes in that movie is near the top, and these um, are pretty creative. So you know they're both great Italian directors. That um, if you're just a fan of horror in any way, shape, or form, you you really should be paying uh, attention to because it's uh. It's a formula we're familiar with, which I think with movies, I think people do gravitate towards familiarity, but it puts, you know, it's a, it's a different coat of paint. It's not necessarily a newer coat of paint. I mean, what this movie came out, oh, it's, it's, it came out in the eighties, you know, which is, which is nuts is it's like, you know, it's 35 years old and it's, but it's, it's fresh for me in a way um and i i very much liked it um it should be stated in the the plot as the killer was tearing up the dress uh, ravens were were being 
killed by the the killer. Um, and that's an important plot point later on. Cut to, you know, the the lead finally kind of admits to the police what's been going on. And I, you know, I get it, but at the same time, I, I don't kind of get it. It's probably one of the first things you really should do. Uh, I think it makes you look very suspicious. Uh, however, that really didn't play a role in the plot where it's like, why, you know, I mean, they do ask her, why didn't you? But they, they are pretty believing that she could not have done this and that she did not do it. Um, but a, a nice plot point was that our, you know, lead female, which I am going to pull her name up because I'm sure everyone, it is a Betty is the person who is the lead. Betty is kind of having like memories that are somewhat closely associated to what she's being experienced when she's tied up. Uh, she kind of has a vision of what seems to be her mother and a killer who looks exactly like the killer in this movie. Uh, but moving forward, we have her being under police protection. Something gets mixed up. Betty's agent comes over. Um, her eyes were like super dried out, understandably so, because she's been like getting them pretty much brutalized by these, these nails and being taped pretty much open for minutes at a time. And we get, one of the coolest uh, movie death scenes, which is look through the eye hole, gun, bango, boom, down goes Frazier. The agent is done for right through the eyeball. And then the bullet actually hits a, a telephone. Uh, slightly minor plot point that happens next as there was a girl who has access to the kind of AC units and can walk between rooms. This allows an escape here, which seems um, kind of improbable. But then the big finale is the lead Betty and her director, former horror movie director, devise a plan to kind of suss out who the killer is. They kind of know, hey, the guy's going to be back to see the performance. So let's unleash the Ravens because they kind of uh, supposedly have a memory and they'll pick out the murderer and everything goes according to plan. The murderer turns out to be the lead detective who has been helping out our lead, Betty. And gets his eye plucked out, which was also super duper cool. But again, they have a huge upper hand and they're like, oh, thank God we, we got him. Well, like put cuffs on him while his eye is gone. You know, he was clearly stunned for a good bit and he's just getting pecked at. Um, but it, they just were like, oh, I guess the Ravens are going to take care of this from here. So they don't finish the job. You know, the lead detective comes, is able to basically put Betty to, you know, tie her up again um, and insist that she kill him as he's basically about to set himself aflame. But it was all an elaborate uh, ruse as we get to, and we spoiled it a little bit, but this is a maybe even bigger spoiler. They realized it was like a stage mannequin that's thrown into the fire whenever he, he stages his own death with Betty to make her think and the police, at least initially that he was dead. And I think that's because of the strong police presence that was at the opera. And once he had kind of been outed, he had to come up with something quick and it was actually a quite ingenious plan to do so. Uh, cut to Betty and director are kind of on the countryside doing their own creative process. It seems to be a movie that they're working on. And as Betty is going for a walk, she gets word from the director inside. He is not dead. He 
staged it like run. Um, this is where big unveil turns out uh, Betty's mom was lovers with this detective and this was kind of where their relationship went to where it was a kind of a way to show love. Anywho, she, Betty, that is, leads the detective to believe that she is like that as well. And and this is after the director gets stabbed. And she decks him in the back of the head with a rock. And the manhunt had been there all along and ends up catching up to him right after he is knocked out. Overall, gave this one three and a half stars out of five. I thought it was really quite good. I like the execution. I like the details. Um, I liked the backstory of it all. Uh, Argento is a tremendous director and the kind of practical effects um, as, as far as like gore went, I thought that was really cool. And, you know, I said cool elements. I like the Ravens. Again, the nails to the eyelids. That's a really just cool, cool detail. There was some like head scratching moments, but again, I am like an elephant, both in size and memory, so I must bring them up as I review. Um, but yeah, I would say definitely check this out. If you like Jalo at all, you're going to like this one for sure. So definitely check this out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope that you both like it and subscribe to the channel. I will also link my letterbox down below so you can see the uh, preview of movies to be reviewed as well as a preview of the review before videos are posted on the weekend. I thank you again and very much appreciate your support and I will catch you on the flippity flu. Bye y'all.